So I just got an email from Eric over at Big Battery. I'm a big fan of your channel and reaching out to see if we can send you a free battery to check out and let us know your experience. Yes, enter. Alrighty, I'm sensing a really long video coming up, so get ready. All right, so back in February, Big Battery contacted me to see if I wanted to test out one of their brand new batteries. I said yes. I'm gonna say the packaging, excellent so far. Cardboard and all the little strappy thingies. And then there's this foam padding on the top. Ugh. All right, so that's the foam padding that comes around it. And you probably can't see in here, so let me get a little closer. All right, so right on top here, looks like we have the 175 amp Anderson connector. And then right below that, we have the big battery. And if you look around the sides and all that kind of stuff, there is foam all the way down. You know, this foam all the way around. So that is A plus. Boom! Okay, so what you're looking at here is one of Big Battery's brand new 48 volt Husky batteries. It's 103 amp hours or 5.3 kilowatt hours. It comes with 16 brand new Goshen lithium iron phosphate cells. It comes complete with a 16S 200 amp advanced BMS with Bluetooth and is also connected to four gauge silicone wire. It has a replaceable 300 amp fuse. The back side of the battery has 175 5 amp Anderson connector. The front includes a blue LED voltage readout and a power button. The top has two handles attached to it so you can cart this 100 pound beast around on the wheels attached to the bottom. They also sent out some six gauge silicone battery cables with ring lugs and a 175 amp Anderson connector that measures roughly 51 inches long to connect the battery to the inverter, which is sold separately. For more information or to download the spec sheet, I'll have a link down below. Alrighty, enough of the shenanigans. First things first is this battery is probably not intended for the DIY crowd per se. It's probably more intended for the person that just doesn't have the time or resources or even want to deal with the hassle of a DIY battery. For the person that wants to buy a battery that's ready to go, pre-assembled with a BMS and one that comes with a 10 year warranty. That's crazy. All right, so I got a few ideas of how this video is gonna go. The first one is I'm not gonna be doing the same old lame capacity test video or the same teardown video that everybody seems to do for batteries just like this. Don't get me wrong, I personally like those type of videos and I've done those in the past. And I'm probably gonna do it with this battery here, but we're just not gonna do it in this video. Here's my thought. Since this is a pre-built battery that you can just buy and, and use right out of the box. I think I'm just gonna be a regular average Joe. I think I'm just gonna do a quick little look over to make sure it wasn't damaged from shipping. I already did that by the way. And then I think we're just gonna go straight to powering my house. I think that would be a good enough test. The reason I want to just use it right out of the box because that's technically what you're supposed to be able to do with a pre-built battery. Two, well, because it's a 48 volt battery, it's 103 amps or 5.3 kilowatt hours. I mean, you should just be able to use it. What comes to mind is Texas. Earlier this year, Texas had one of those once in a lifetime storms where it just got super cold and it started snowing. On top of all all that from what I understand it was so bad that they almost had like a complete grid failure. The only way they avoided a complete shutdown is they initiated a rolling blackout to different parts of the state. I mean how crazy scary is that? Now obviously I wasn't there and I didn't experience it or anything like that. I'm not even a hundred percent sure how long everybody lost power because I think it was different for everybody in the state. It just wasn't a good situation at all. And I 
I kind of want to find out is if we could use a battery just like this and an, an inverter similar to mine, it doesn't have to be exactly like mine, to see if we could either help solve or help prevent something like this from happening in the future. And I guess we will also find out if something like this would be a great option for a an off-grid setup. So what I'm kind of thinking today is we're going to connect this 48 volt Husky battery to my split phase inverter over there and we are going to simulate a rolling blackout. All right, so just to give you a quick idea of how this is gonna work, my inverter has the capability to act like a UPS. A UPS is an uninterruptible power supply. And what that means is I can connect the grid or utility to my inverter, and then the inverter has the capability to pass that grid through onto your circuit breaker which powers your house. Now since we're going to have the Husky battery hooked up to the inverter, if the grid or utility goes down or if you're in a rolling blackout or something like that, the inverter will automatically kick on and continue powering your house. You won't even know you lost power. And then whenever the grid or utility comes back online, the inverter will automatically switch back over to the grid and pass through as it was before and then it'll automatically start recharging your batteries. You don't even need solar panels for this. However, if you do have solar panels, you could extend your runtime or possibly be completely off-grid altogether. So I'm going to connect the Husky battery up to the inverter. We're going to shut off the power from the grid and we're just going to live like normal test it out. All right, so having said all that, this video is pretty much about the battery. However, the inverter is an important part of this whole thing here. So I'm probably going to be referring to the inverter occasionally throughout the video. And another thing that I mentioned earlier is this BMS has the Bluetooth capabilities to it. They don't have an app for it quite yet. However, I did find a random BMS app in the App Store. I can't pronounce it. Xiao Xiao Shang, I'm not 100% sure. This did connect to it, however, uh, the remaining amp hours or total capacity is not matched up to the battery. Everything else seems to match up fine. So I'm just going to be using this for reference. Just know in the future they will have an app designed for the battery itself. Alrighty, I think that pretty much sums it up. Let's go connect the battery up to the inverter and simulate a rolling blackout. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is hook up the Anderson plug, and you want this side facing out. And before you do that, make sure the power is off. So if you measure the terminals right now, there is just a floating voltage. However, if you turn it on, that's when you get the voltage. So we're gonna turn it back off right before we connect it to the inverter. Now I do have to mention real quick before you connect the positive side, it's always a good idea to pre-charge the capacitors on the inverter. So how we're gonna do that is turn the Husky big battery on and we're gonna hook up a resistor in between the positive cable and positive on the inverter. And what that does is just slow down the inrush current. And another thing this prevents is the big spark that can happen whenever you connect the positive cable, which could actually melt your terminal. So it's a good idea to pre-charge before you connect. The resistor that I'm using is a 10 ohm 100 watt resistor. However, this is not the only resistor you can use. There are plenty of options. All right, inverter is showing 52.4 volts. So what I'm gonna do next is turn on the solar while we still have just a little bit of sun so the battery will recharge. And in that meantime, I will configure the inverter to match the battery specifications, which is the high cutoff and low cutoff. And at this current moment, we are charging the battery at 24 and a half amps. And you can see that right there, 1300 watts. All right, I'm gonna let this charge up and I will be right back. All right, so at this current moment, the battery says 55.8 volts. And then on the app, right down here, we have charge and discharge. Those are both on. We're not consuming or recharging anything at the moment. And you can see that here with the current icon. The average cell voltage is 3.48, which is actually good because you technically don't wanna keep recharging lithium iron phosphate cells to 3.65 volts all the time. So this battery voltage works out perfect. All right, so that's the battery voltage here. We're full charge. Let me go up to the inverter real quick. So we're going to be using this inverter as a UPS. So option one, I've got it set to utility first. So utility will provide power to the loads as the first 
priority, and solar and battery energy will provide power to the loads only if the utility power is not available, which would be a grid down situation. And then I'm going to go up to the recharge setting. Utility will charge the battery as a first priority. So again, if we're in a rolling blackout or something similar to that, we can set it to this setting. That way, whenever the utility or grid power comes back, the inverter will automatically start recharging the batteries. And since we're going to be recharging with the inverter, we will set up the recharge amps. All right, so I have it set for 10 amps, and we're going to go ahead and raise that to 40 amps. All right. 40 amps is set. All right, so the other options I'm gonna show real quick is the bulk charging voltage. Okay, so I actually have the inverter to recharge to 56 volts, and the reason for that is, you know, there's a little bit of voltage difference readings from the inverter and the battery BMS and the little tiny LCD display on the battery. So what I found is 56 volts is kind of that happy medium where the BMS doesn't shut off on the battery. I'm going to go ahead and shut off the solar panels, that way we don't recharge from these for this test. Alright, sorry for the poor lighting here, but it's going to be shut off here in a second, and I have my O-Light flashlight here so I can still see whenever the lights turn off. Alright, so how this is all hooked up, power comes from another sub-panel through these wires right here, goes into the inverter, and then comes out through these wires, kind of wraps around here, and then goes into these top two circuit breakers right here. And I have this generator interlock kit, and what that does is it prevents two power sources from trying to power your house. We're gonna go through and turn off all these breakers. So what we're gonna do here is turn off the grid power. All right, grid power is off, you can see there. And then we're gonna flip this up and then turn on the, the circuit breakers. All right, so now we do have inverter power, so we can turn on all of these circuit breakers here. All right, so now we are in UPS mode. We are still connected to the grid. Basically what's happening is the grid is coming down through these wires right here, going into the inverter and passing straight through to my circuit breaker panel and powering the house as it normally should. So how we're gonna start this rolling blackout is there is a circuit breaker on the bottom side of my inverter. We're just gonna shut that off and that's gonna shut off the grid to my house. And then the inverter is gonna automatically kick on and, and continue powering the house as it normally should. All right, so here's the AC input circuit breaker I was just talking about, and all I'm gonna do is shut this off. Simulated blackout starts now. All right, so we are officially off grid and my house is being powered by the 48 volt Husky battery. So now we are simulated grid down. We are drawing 16 amps right now and that is 800 and we'll say 50 watts. That's gonna kind of go up and down. So at this current moment, my house is drawing 540 watts. So let's go around and see what all is powered. We have this light right here. This is a fluorescent light, so it's not the most efficient. An LED light right there, right there. And back there in my little shop area, you know, there's random battery chargers and all that kind of stuff that is on. This light right here. These two lights here in the stairwell. These two lights here in the kitchen. There's my cat. We're powering a really old camera camera DVR system with eight cameras, a router, cable modem, and mini PC. We are powering the refrigerator. There is a refrigerator downstairs, which we can go check here in a minute. There is nothing. Hey, cat, you're all over the place. One of these air purifiers are on. That light right there is on. The thermostat is on. In the bathroom, now we got two lights are on and that little smelly thingy is on. A humidifier. Another smelly good thing. The blinking clocks now since I turned everything off and back on. This was that other refrigerator that I forgot to mention a few minutes ago. This is the beer fridge. That one is on as well. Come down here and check the battery voltage. We are at 52.6. All right, so at this current moment, again, we are drawing 16 amps from this battery, which is 855 watts. 
that's really nothing. You can technically discharge like 100 amps. Alrighty, so let's find out what else we can power. Everybody always likes to see the, uh, the heat gun, so we will go ahead and power that. And I just added three more LED lights. We're drawing 17.6 amps. So we're drawing 31.6 amps. We'll try high. All right, so that is 46 amps from the battery. Total of 2380 watts. Alrighty, heat gun, no problem. There's my cat again. We are looking pretty good. So we are gonna simulate making some coffee. How about that? This is only 950 watts. 12? Okay. So we have 12 cups of water. Brew now. All right, now we are pulling 32 to 33 amps total. It's about 1700 watts. All right, so while the coffee's brewing, let's see what else we can power. We're gonna try that vacuum cleaner right there. Even though you probably wouldn't vacuum during a rolling blackout. Try to mute it as best as I can. Vacuum cleaner, no problem. All right, well, let's go back downstairs and see what else we can power. Hopefully I can get this started before the coffee machine is done. This compressor is 14 amps, two horsepower or 2.5 horsepower peak. All right, so here goes the air compressor and I will turn the volume down on the video editing. I didn't get to see it on there, but hopefully you did. So if you are in a grid down situation and needed to use an air compressor while making coffee, you can. All right, I wanna do the saw before the coffee machine stops. All right, so this is a 10 inch sliding compound miter saw. It's 15 amps. All right, here we go. And I'll mute it as best as I can. All right, so if you're in a grid down situation, you could cut wood and make coffee at the same time. Or if you're just using it for a off grid system, you could do that as well. All right, so here it still says 52.6 volts. The inverter, which you probably can't see, says 52.5 volts. Yeah, everything is working out damn good. All right, so I am touching this entire thing. Nothing is warm. Battery cables are not warm. All right, full cut. Yeah, full cut of poppy. <laughs> so we have our full pot of simulated coffee right here. So we can make coffee. All right, so since the wife has got home, she's turned on a whole bunch of more lights and turned on the dish washer. And this is the current amp draw. Looks like 37 amps. Battery voltage is 51. 0.7, 1900 watts, still running strong. So what I think I'm gonna do next is, I'm not gonna turn the furnace heat on, however, I am going to turn on at least the blower motor. We do have natural gas for our heat here, so, you know. All right, so now the blower motor on the furnace is running. And we're gonna go downstairs so you can verify that, at least with noise. All right, so the blower motor is on on the furnace. So we are now drawing 44.6 amps, which is 2,200 and, or 2,300 watts now. Battery voltage is still 51.49. So I'm gonna go around and just start turning on every single light. So we can start draining the batteries down a little bit more. All right, so in the hallway, we got a light here. This is the stairs actually, sorry. Light up there, light down there. And there's like, I don't know, eight lights on downstairs. In the kitchen, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight lights. Family room right here. We got four lights along this side, three lights up there, the TV on, all of these items right here. There's a light right there that's on. Of course, I'm charging a laptop. We have the furnace blower motor on. We have an air filter on. Those three lights, this light right here, and there's a light out there. There's on. Here's my cat. He's on. All right, so there's a light. We got two in this little hallway right here on. Bathroom light on, and now the fan is on. Again, most of these are LED, so it doesn't matter. 
light is on. A little light there. Got a light here. Oh, that one might be burnt out. Oh, wrong one. There we go. Oh, we got we got this halogen if it's plugged in. Yep, that one's plugged in. Oh, the dishwasher is on too, but I don't know if the heating element is on yet. Alrighty, we have damn near everything on in the house. Okay, good. We're drawing 52 amps, and we are still at 51 volts. I've got this really old microwave. It's tiny though, but we'll plug it, we'll turn it on. All right, here we go. This is a super old microwave. If it makes a bunch of noise, I'll mute it in the video. There we go. 58 amps. So we've been off grid, I think now for a little over three hours and that's just running all the random stuff. I was kind of thinking the batteries were going to be dead already, but I am genuinely surprised. Now again, we haven't done like a full 100 amps or anything like that. I don't even know what I could run. I could do another simulated coffee pot. Should we do that? Let's do that. Okay, full pot. The dishwasher is running now. All right, here we go. We're at 38 right now. 57. It looks like we're doing pretty good. That is 57 amps and we're still watching my YouTube video. If we had some laundry, I could do laundry. Alright, so I just had a thought. While the coffee pot is running, I could plug in one of those, um, those space heaters and see what that does. Alright, so here we go. We are drawing 55 amps. I'm gonna go on low. There's 72 amps. Can you see that? 88 amps. Uh, I'm gonna go to high real quick and it might shut everything down. Alright, that's 104 amps we're, we're drawing right now. So I'm gonna back that off so I don't want it to shut down and everything. Alright, so there's 88 amps. I'll let that go. Can you see that okay? Battery voltage is still 50. This battery is a beast! I don't know. I don't know what else to say. Alright, so we do have some warmth in the battery cables now. All right, so here's the front side of the battery and the little tiny hotspot is the LED display. All the outside looks good, nothing hot or anything like that. Let's say 73 degrees. Here is the side with the BMS. Warmest I can see is around 70 degrees Fahrenheit. And if we go back to the wires and the Anderson plug, those are around 85 to 87 degrees Fahrenheit. So everything looks to be pretty good. Nothing too hot or anything like that. Like nothing, nothing at all. We're running my entire house off of the big battery. I'm just shocked. Completely shocked. I thought this was gonna go quick, throwing all sorts of stuff at it, and we're still pulling 72 amps at this current moment. That's like 4,400 watts, roughly. Battery voltage is 49.67, and the average cell voltage is 3.10. Ooh, we're at 89 amps. I want to simulate the grid coming back on or recharge it, but I don't think this is, I just don't think the battery voltage is low enough yet. I'm just, I'm shocked, completely shocked. Sorry, I keep saying that, but it's true. All right, coffee is done again. That is two full pots so far while running everything else. All right, so I just walked around the house real quick to count how many lights are on, and I currently have 52 lights on. The dishwasher is on. I've got two refrigerators on. It's like no problem. No problem at all, all right? We're drawing 57 amps still at this moment. Battery voltage is 47.82, all right? So it is just doing damn good. I don't know, it's like how do they squeeze that much power into, into that right there? How do they do it? I don't know. I have no idea. I was wondering if we could not watch you on the big TV. Yeah, you can watch whatever you want. <laughs> All right, so uh, time now is 3.40. So we are going to, I'm actually gonna switch it back over to the grid. You're fine, you can do whatever you want. You shouldn't notice a thing. I can wait. No, 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 you go about your electrical usage as normal. <laughs> yeah, you might say that. 
Yeah, I do. All right, so what we're gonna do now is simulate like a Texas rolling blackout where the power would come back on and the inverter is going to recharge the battery. So that's what we're gonna do next. Oh, good, we're, we're actually down here. So we're at 50, 44 volts. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. For any second. There we go. So now we're back on grid power. So we're recharging at 43 amps. So we were real close to the actual cutoff of this. And we almost missed it. I, I just didn't want everything to shut down in the entire house. So we're going to let this charge up a little bit. The suggested charge amps is 45. So we are at the suggested 45 amps for the recharge. But I kind of want to bring it up just a little faster to test that out. So the max charge current is... 90 amps. There we go. 62, 65, 70, 83, 88, 95. Uh-oh, let me, uh, I'm getting too much. Oh, it's kind of bouncing around a little bit. So we're definitely throwing in some power now. All right, so we are recharging at 5,000 watts. And it looks like we're just a hair over the recommended charge current. So I'm gonna back off a little bit. We're bringing in 3.3 kilowatt of solar. It's working pretty damn good to me. All right, so the time now is 5.15 p.m. and we were pumping in around 80 amps until just a few minutes ago. And we are almost full charge. So battery voltage right now is 56.2 volts. All right, so if my opinion matters, um, I'm pretty impressed. I'm going to say that the simulated rolling blackout test worked out really good, even though it pretty much turned into let's just power everything. And you can thank the wife for that because she came home in the middle of my test and she was like, I thought you were testing a battery. And I'm like, I am. She's like, why aren't any of the lights on? So the credit can go to her. All right, so to kind of recap here, the total blackout time or the time we were on the battery power was like a hair over three hours. Now, to me, it did seem like a lot longer because, you know, I'm running around the house, turning everything on, making coffee. I even had lunch and watched a couple of YouTube videos. So to me, it seemed like it lasted a lot longer than it did but I'm a guy. Okay, maybe I'll, t maybe I'll remove that. I don't know, we'll see. So a hair over three hours powering my entire house and a bunch of other random things throughout the day. Now, when the grid came back online and we started to do the recharge, I put it to 45 amps, and that's just what the recommended charge rate is. However, if you're in like a rolling blackout or some other type of situation, you don't know when the power is going to be going back off again. You kind of want to recharge your battery as fast as you can. So I did bump that up to, I think it went up to 106 there for a second. I kind of got a little nervous and then I just let it go and it settled off around like 96 amps or something like that. I let that go for a couple of minutes. Um, it should be just fine to recharge at that rate. However, they do recommend the, the 90 amps as being their maximum. So I lowered it down to around 80 or 85 and that did last for about an hour and 20 or 25 minutes. So uh, if you recharge at 90 amps the entire time, it, it's gonna be just fine. The temperature on everything didn't get hot at all. The most that I saw was on the wires and I think that was around 87 degrees Fahrenheit. Oh, and speaking of the specs, I probably should have put that at the beginning of the video, but I was just too excited. So the maximum continuous discharge current is 130 amps. Uh, obviously during the video, I kind of forgot about that. For some reason, I was thinking it was 100 amps, so I, I kind of shut it down, but I could have let it go. I just, I'm just an idiot. That's pretty much it. The max peak discharge is 350 amps and that's only for like six seconds. So that would be if you already have like a, a big current draw on the battery and maybe you start a saw or something like that. It should give you that surge of 350 amps for around six seconds. Like I said, the max charging current is 90. However, they recommend you to recharge it at 45 amps and that's just to extend the battery's lifetime. All right, so here here are my thoughts on this battery is I would say that this 
48 volt Husky battery. I do think it is a viable option for rolling blackouts or if you're in an area where you lose power quite often. I, I hate to say it, but it, it will solve the problem, I guess, depending on how long your power goes out. And I kind of think that you could get by with an off-grid living setup with one of these batteries as well. Obviously, my test only lasted for three hours, but I'm running my entire house. My house is 2,200 and something square feet. That's just on the main level. And of course, all the basement is unfinished, so they don't count that as living space. So almost a 5,000 square foot home. We had over 52 lights on, two refrigerators, you know, and a bunch of other random stuff on at the same time. I was pretty much trying to run the battery down on purpose to see if there's any weak links or anything like that. And I didn't... I really didn't find any. So if you're using this in like a rolling blackout or an off-grid type of situation, you're obviously going to conserve power so you can extend the runtime. And everybody's runtime is gonna be different, you know, because everybody's place is different. I can give you just a quick example of some, some runtime. So if you're pulling, let's say 15 to 17 amps from this battery right here. So in my house, that is two refrigerators, LED lights. I don't know if it's a 60 or a 65 inch TV upstairs, along with the Wi-Fi router, cable modem, the little mini PC and that super old DVR with the eight cameras attached to it and all the other phantom power from, you know, tool battery chargers, phone chargers, laptops, and uh, a couple clocks and stuff like that. I can run my house on all of those things for six to six and a half hours. I know that because I'm actually recording this ending of the video two weeks later because I just left the battery hooked up to the inverter and I've been kind of using it in like a, a reverse UPS mode. Basically, I am just using it as an off-grid setup and using the grid for my, for my backup. So I'll be running my entire house minus my stove, dryer, you know, those things three quarters of the day and then there's about six hours where you know I go back on grid until the sun comes back up and then recharges the battery to roughly 54 volts where it switches back to the off-grid mode and I continue powering my house for another 18 hours. I've been doing that for the past two weeks and I've had zero problems. Alrighty, here is my pitch that we all try to pitch to everybody. You guys are all big boys and girls. I'm not gonna tell you whether you should or shouldn't buy this battery, only you can decide that. I will say though, if you are interested in the Husky battery or any other battery that Big Battery offers, they did give me a 10% off discount code to pass on to you guys, and that is Geo10. So if you wanna save some cash, you can. And of course, if you do use the discount code, I do get a small kickback which helps support the YouTube channel and help me create videos. All right, that's pretty much all I got. I've wasted enough of your time. I'd love to hear any of your questions, comments, and concerns. If you liked the video or found it helpful, don't forget to like the smash button. Feel free to subscribe and hit the little notification bell. Not that it's going to let you know I uploaded a video anyway, but it's always worth a try. And I'll see you on the next one. Oh. I forgot to turn on the bottom of the inverter. This is an old phone. As you can tell, it's got that pink line on there. That's from the Call of Duty mobile. Oh, and now my recording? Damn it. I am just super surprised by, I don't know. I'm just amazed. Batteries amaze me. I mean, I was running all sorts of stuff. It like hasn't budged. Well, of course it hasn't budged. There's not one light on except for these. Hey, dude, I was, I powered a vacuum cleaner. There's no light in the, <laughs> the entire house. Well, it's There's daytime no out. I power, I made, I simulated coffee. I powered a vacuum cleaner at the same time, a saw and a air compressor. I can do some electricity if you want me to. We'll do laundry. Do some laundry. Perfect. We'll vacuum. But let me get that on camera. <laughs> Unless you want to bring it down. <laughs> bring the camera down for me. We'll uh, charge, our, charge the laptop. Yes. Woo! We're not we're not on solar either. It's just pure battery. What? Well, I don't understand. Don't you want to be on solar? 
Well, yeah, but we're simulated a grid down right now. Oh, uh, sim, sim grid down. Yeah. So everybody else out there has zero power except for us. Oh, I see. See? So if the grid was down, I couldn't think. I'd, I'd hook the stove up just for that. <laughs> <laughs> just couldn't use anything else at the same time? I don't know. I'd have to see. Depends if you made it during daytime or not. Because then I would hook up the solar. Mm -hmm. oh, dishes. We could do dishes. Oh crap, I forgot to start the dishwasher. Can I start the dishwasher? Yeah. What is even oh, happening? Grid solar inverter that I Are bought for <laughs> solar. <laughs> we're watching my own video, and that's the, the inverter that we're using. So if you want to see more about it, click on the link down below, or just go to my channel. How about that? Say less plug. Option two is pretty much using it as an off-grid inverter, which means there is no AC input connection from the grid. I which we're technically doing right now. Technically, However, technically, technically. 